right, well, welcome to Laugh It Off with Grace. I am so excited today because I have a wonderful guest, an amazing woman. She is a successful lawyer. I have to read everything she's done because she's that amazing. Successful lawyer. She's a television personality, a radio host, an entrepreneur, an author, and she's a national columnist and a mother and wife. Please give it up at home for Cristina Perez from Cristina's Court. How are you Hi, doing? Sweetheart. How are you? Oh. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me to be here at Laugh It Off with Grace. Well, thank you for coming to the show. I am so excited that you're here. I am honored. Oh, please. Judge Christina. I'm honored to be here, Miss <laughs> Grace. I'm honored, Your Honor. <laughs> so how do you do all this? Oh, you know, um, it's a great question that I never have an answer to. I think that I was taught by incredible parents that mm -hmm. who came to this country with nothing, that you appreciate everything you have and you just work day by day and as long as you're happy with what you do and you feel good about what you've done and you can go home and say okay I did a good job um, I think everything falls in naturally so it's just, you know, I do it you know I always tell people I do it very carefully I always put my family first uh, great I love what I do grace it I, I just I love what I do so it's easy to do what I do you have passion about everything you do I, you know, I, I, I do. I mean, I love everything I do. It's, it's easier. It's easy for me to be a wife, a mother, uh, you know, judge on Christina's court. It's just I feel extremely blessed with, with my life. And you know what I love about you? You're like the woman because oh, you. Be <laughs> Stop, girl! <laughs> Look at her. You're so funny. Uh, because you balance everything and. You are a great professional and a wonderful family person where you care about your family and your friends because I did read your book, My cover book. to cover, right here, Live, <laughs> Living My by Los Dichos. Book. When I mix, don't you like screw up the, the English? Well, living by Los Dichos. Living by Los Dichos. Sí, you know, Living bien, by Los bien. Dichos. Muy bien. Si, sí, señora. Yeah. Great book. I absolutely so loved it and it just, I learned so much about you. And uh, do you think that the fact that you, your parents were immigrants yes. and you come from a Latino culture, a mm -hmm. Latin culture, and you lived here makes you the woman that you are, the well-balanced woman that you are. You know, I think that we are who we are out of a product of our family. I think mm -hmm. a product of our life. I, I think that being part of an immigrant family, you're exposed to many more experiences. You're, you know, in, in my case in particular, I was exposed to a lot of, you know, racism. My parents, a lot of oh. prejudice, a lot of hard times. Uh, but my parents aren't angry. My parents are really they appreciate everything they went through. It, you know, they work harder. Uh, they're just incredible people and people often tell me Christina Dario and Araceli my mom my mother and father they are the same people that I met 30 plus 40 years ago when they came to this country and today and that teaches you a value of the human spirit it teaches you the value to really stay close and connected you know we're so often we're out there looking for the magical solution we're looking for the key for happiness the key for that and a lot of us don't understand that we already have it in our back pocket it's, it's if you are blessed to come from a good family or even if you don't have a mother or father, there's somebody out there who is a mother or father figure. Mm -hmm. And it's really looking at those, those characteristics and those lessons those people teach you to be happy in life. Because if you're not happy with who you are and what you have in life, all the money in the world, all the friends in the world, it doesn't matter. Absolutely. So I think definitely being part of an immigrant family, being part of a life experience that was moving from place to place, meeting different people, definitely has helped me be, you know, more acclimated and, and, and I, I, I can adapt easier to different situations and things like that. And you can understand yeah, people I better so. where they're I coming think from. So. I think so. And I think we were talking about this, Grace. I think that being bicultural, mm -hmm. uh, or some of us are tricultural or yeah, multicultural. Exactly. Uh, it, it gives you a special gift, mm -hmm. the gift to really be connected. Because I was asking you, why are you so appealing to the older generation, but the new generation and the 10 and the 15 year olds? I, I think it's because we have that, that, that old school value of our parents. We're conservative, mm -hmm. whether we admit it or not, we are. There's yeah, a little bit of Exactly, because it's not that cool to be conservative, but, but not, we but are. But at the same time, we're very liberal. But mm -hmm. we're feminists, mm -hmm. but we're women traditional women. I'm with you. I'm getting goosebumps when you say that because I, it's just very few women that can relate to that way. Yeah. We're both blonde Latinas. 
<laughs> there you go. The wrong side, but uh, I don't, I'm not, <laughs> I don't know about you. I was a little blonde girl. Were you a little yeah, blonde girl? Yeah, I was a little toehead, yeah. Yeah, me too, and me too. Know, it's, it's funny how people look at you and they judge you by your appearance. How can you be Latina? Absolutely. Uh, excuse me, go to Mexico, go to South America. You're going to find people who look, who are fairer than I am, who have blonde hair, blue eyes, mm -hmm. who are black. Uh, and uh, exactly, we come in all colors, shapes, and sizes. Absolutely. But, so, you know, do you do you find that that people accuse you of being a fake Latina sometimes? Oh, there's you know, <laughs> nothing about me is fake, but especially being Latina. But um, I, I smile at people. I yeah, I know, say, I know. Oh, Are you really Latina? <laughs> I get that all the ah, time. There's a couple words that come into mind. I just smile. You know, people will know who you are by how you act in life. And, and I think that there's a unique, gift of being Latina. We are people mm -hmm. that attract others. Uh, I'm not talking about physically or, or, or sexually, uh, but we well, attract... Well, that too, hopefully. Yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> but we attract, um, I think that we're homey. We are yes. easy to talk to. Uh, you know, on Christina's Court, my executive producer, Peter Brennan, tells me, Christina, I don't understand. Coming to Christina's Court is like coming to a confessional. People will come here and they will say, I'm sorry, yes, I did it, forgive really? me. Uh, I think it's when you listen, you know, I think there's something about you where you've learned so much in your life, maybe the background of, of being bicultural, that gives you a special, I don't know, a special connection maybe, if you want to call it, call it corny, but maybe. Absolutely. And you know what got my attention in your book that you did not speak English until you were about 10. Yes. Now, I watch your show, which absolutely is my favorite show, and I'm not kissing up to you, <laughs> people. It's the best show. Thank it's you. great because you have the perfect balance, Judge, you know. Um, I lost my track of thought. No, we were talking. Okay, at 10. See, that's the comedian in me. We just <laughs> lose track of thought really quick. But you came here, and you did not mm -hmm. speak English. Now, I, I watch the program, and I see you are very expressive, like I am, too. And do you think that has anything to do with the fact that you made yourself be understood by your facial expressions when you couldn't speak English? Yeah. Well, do yeah, you think, think that has that, something to do with that? I never thought about that. That's a good point. Uh, but tell me what Latina is not expressive or Latino is not expressive with A little voice. bit too much, aren't we? Think of our mothers. We're going like this. We're always talking. Ah, ha, ha. Yeah. For me, it's funny because with my husband, he's a New Yorker, and we, have, we joke oh, around. Oh, I love and for, him. It, it, I search once in a while for adjectives. And, and, you know, I'll say, Christopher, what, es que como se llama? And he looks at me, he's like, I have no idea what you're talking about. Oh, how cute. So I think it's a lot of that. And it was, yes, you know, when I came here, when I was a little girl, and I, my mom said I had absolutely no problem communicating with my, my friends who only spoke English. And I was speaking them in Spanish, and they were talking to me in English, and we somehow got along. We communicated. It wasn't an issue. Do you so, think that has something to do oh, yeah. with how you are today and you can express how you feel and you can communicate with people so easily and they trust you so much? I think, I think maybe it does have a lot to mm -hmm. do with it. I think when I did La Corte Familia, you know, a lot of people don't know that I'd been doing court shows since 1999. Wow. Um, but when I did La Corte Familia uh, on Telemundo, it was a lot of that. It was the communication. It was reading people. It was being expressive because, you know, in the Latino culture, if you're more expressive, they get you. They... Uh, <laughs> They get you more, you know, yeah. if you say, senora, you know, okay, okay. So I think it's part of our culture, yeah. The Absolutely. more expressive you are in your, in your lips, and it's sometimes my face does things that I don't even know I'm doing, you know. I know, so. transparency, <laughs> complete, I know, it's like, you don't like that. Oh, no, I love it. Yeah, I love exactly. it, yeah, you know. it's, it's not, We're not good liars, are we? <laughs> horrible liars. I, I quit when I was 10. I was like. <laughs> Can't lie. <laughs> I had exactly. a friend in college, she was like, let me coach you how to lie, okay? Because <laughs> exactly. you're the worst liar. Oh, yeah, sure, I like that shirt. You know, yeah, it's, sure. You, know, it's, it's, you, you can, I mean, and I think that's a good thing that you, you can't uh, fake emotion and, and things are natural. I think, you know, Christina's Court helps me out a lot because you, you can tell, you can read people. People, it's so funny, Grace, because um, when you do these shows, uh, court shows, and they're real people, real litigants, uh, we always say in the age of reality TV, 
court shows are really the ultimate unscripted drama because they're stories about human emotion, you know, mm -hmm. love, betrayal, anger. Uh, you know, a lot of people come to the show, uh, to court shows like Christina's Court, because they want to be proven right. It's not about the money. It's not about the 15 minutes of fame. They want that public vindication to show that my best oh. friend of 20 years or this guy that I was in a contract with is wrong. That is what is most important to them. And when you let people express themselves, uh, people who are wrong, the more they talk, the more they realize they're wrong. Uh -huh. And they catch themselves. And you're like, okay, you caught yourself. So exactly. You're right. And you know, once in a while you have to lay it in and, and, mm -hmm. and be aggressive and because obviously law and the justice is the most important thing and then you, you want to give justice. But, you know, at the same time, you have to let people, you have to give somebody an ear and while there's many different styles of court shows out there and many different judges there's room for everybody um, I think my least favorite style are, are those that belittle people's problems and oh, people's lives yeah, because I then like they're not doing justice to anything that you do this is serious stuff for me it's serious stuff exactly it's, it's more than entertainment you don't put yourself above oh, no. the people yeah. which is great and I want to talk more about Christina's court okay. after this BSA okay definitely so stay tuned this is Meryl Streep. American Forests is planting trees in hundreds of ecosystem restoration projects across America and around the world. With forest ecologists and local experts, American Forests is planting life-sustaining native trees on degraded sites that desperately need help. Planting in areas scorched by recent massive wildfires, helping to regenerate our precious forests. From California to the Chesapeake Bay, Florida to the Puget Sound, these trees improve habitat for salmon, bald eagle, and other wildlife. They clean our air by removing pollutants and filter the water we drink. They cool the planet as they take in carbon dioxide, and they beautify our world. American Forests will plant millions of trees this year. Join American Forest Campaign to plant trees. Call 1-800-545-TREE. That's 1-800-545-TREE or plant trees online at AmericanForest.org. It'll be 365 days till I can drive across town to help my cousin with his homework. You know what I'm saying? 52 weeks till I take my friends to the drive-thru after school. Check it out. A year of going out with my lady on the bus. I try to cover my high. The CHP saw right through it. I lost my license, my job, my car, everything. I had to pay the price. Don't do it. Never drink and drive. Check yourself. And we're back here at the studio with Cristina Perez. Go Cristina Perez. Okay, yes. let's Christina let's call Perez. it like it is, right? Thank you. <laughs> do they call her Cristina Perez? Uh, yeah, only you do. I think um, it's you know it's easier to say Cristina Perez, but uh, Perez. Perez. That's that's what. But you know I am Cristina Perez. That's that's. Don't you I feel am. weird when you pronounce? Spanish words with an English accent. I do that a lot. Do you find yourself I used to, doing that? I, I used to feel weird about it, but you know, Spanish is my first language, so I'm going to pronounce things. Oh uh, yeah. Oh, you know, I'm going to pronounce things as they should be pronounced, and and you know, I think people appreciate that. And still, they don't believe you're Spanish, even when you do that, right? Uh, yeah. When I start to roll on the Spanish, are like. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Did you learn Spanish in high school? I used to get that too. No. I learned it off the internet, okay? <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> no. Phoenix University or whatever, exactly. those correspondent exactly. courses. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. right. That was my first language too. Yeah, it's, you know, it's, I think it's a, it's a great tool uh, because, you know, you will always speak a different language. If you speak a different language, you will use it. I use it every single day. It, it, wherever I am, at the grocery store, at Costco, at the, the mall, wherever I am, I will use the Spanish language every day, and it's it's incredible. Absolutely. You're, it makes you a richer, more interesting says, person. My mother says, it is those personas, you're two people when yes. you know two different languages. So. You are right. That's what that's what she says, and she's getting, who you try telling my mother she's wrong. Oh, that, oh, that, Sister, <laughs> I got one of those too. <laughs> okay. okay, mommy. <laughs> I know sometimes when I don't know if you find yourself when I speak English, I become more white 
And then when I speak Spanish or like English with a more Spanish accent, I'm like, hello, you know, hey, salsa, (laughs) you know, it's weird. You're so funny. No, I think, uh, you know, I've never, I'll have to keep attention of that or pay attention to that because I I think, I don't know, I'll have to look into that. I think I'm pretty normal in the way I go back and forth. Not to say you're not, Grace. (laughs) I am not, I know I'm not normal, (laughs) don't worry about it. Uh, so let's go to the to the show. Yes. Uh, you started on Telemundo. I started on Telemundo on La Corte del Pueblo, La, and okay. then tele, locally in the Los Angeles market, and then Telemundo loved, you know, they were pioneers. They saw that Spanish TV wow. at times should mirror English TV, and th- they loved the court show idea. Mm-hmm. So um, I, uh, they, they picked us up, the production company picked us up to go on nationally in 15 countries internationally, <gasps> and I started doing wow. La Corte de Familia. And I was the first female judge on Spanish language TV to, to do that. <laughs> and that was six years, almost six years. And it was incredible, an incredible, one of the best things that I've ever been able to do. Did you ever uh, think you want to end up doing TV yeah, when you went to law school? Never. Oh, my God, are you kidding me? It's like uh, I met one of the producers who produced uh, La Corte Familia, and he said, no, Cristina, you need to be on TV. I'm like, estás loco, Dios mío. <laughs> and so I went, I did a screen test with, you know, great people, uh, lawyers and judges and very well-known people, and they called me the next day, like, Cristina, we loved you, we want you to do, we want you to start. Three months later, I started taping the show. How cool. And your mom, I read in your book that she kind of knew that you were going to be on TV and you were going to be a lawyer. I know they always say that, of right? Course. I mean, come on. <laughs> they know it all. Mothers, <laughs> mothers, they know everything. But, you know, she always called me la abogada de los pobres, mm-hmm. which is, you know, the, 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 the lawyer of the poor. the poor. Not necessarily poor, but basically somebody who defends the needy, who's always mm-hmm. there to stick up for somebody. Like a Robin because, Hood. Yes. I, that's what I did. I always did that. You know, when my brother and my sister got yelled at, I had tried to explain to my parents. She used to tell me all the time, Mija, we couldn't punish you because you would tell us, listen, I know what I did was wrong for one, two, three. Oh, how funny. So I understood. It's like, what punishment am I going to get? I understood what I did wrong. So it was just, you know, but you never in your wildest dreams do you ever imagine that you're going to be on TV. And it's, it's a, you know, you have to love what you do in every mm-hmm. facet. Do, doing TV is fun. It's entertaining. It's rewarding. But it's work. It's hard work. You take it seriously. Mm-hmm. Um, I appreciate that I have the opportunity every single day. But it's, like I said, this is serious business. It's, you're dealing with real people, real problems, and you're making real decisions. So you have to, it's not something that you can, ah, okay, fine. Yeah, you know, whatever. For, yeah. for the defendant. It's you no showbiz, to, really. It's real really, cases. I mean, you know, you have to exaggerate some for the entertainment value. You sure. understand that. But you can never take away the fact that you're making a decision that's going to affect somebody. Yes. Good or bad. And that's what you have to go home with every day. And sometimes mm-hmm. decisions are hard to make. Sometimes, you know, your heart tells you one thing, but you can't. You can't let your emotion rule you. Um, and but, but we do allow people on the show to express themselves. Um, because the more they express themselves and they understand and we connect to them on that level, it's easier to understand uh, uh, a legal decision that you make. And what I love about your show, um you know, the, uh, from all the judge shows that are out there, is the fact that I feel that you balance being compassionate, the humanity of it, with the law. Mm-hmm. Like you look at both things at the same time. So how do you do that? Do you, do you first look at the case from a hum- human point of no, view? You or you have to, you always look at the case. I, I think that being uh, an arbitrator, being a judge, being somebody who makes a decision in, in mm-hmm. what you do, you bring in life experiences. You have to. I mean, naturally, it's, it's yeah. who you are. You do a great, successful television show, and it's successful because of your personality, uh, of your beliefs, your moral values, you, the way things are, are going to be done. But you know you are dictated because it's TV. There are certain things you have to do, vice versa. Exactly. Um, it's the same when you're making a decision. You know, Obviously, the law is paramount, and you have to make a decision based on the law. Um, and it, sometimes it's hard to make that decision because the law tells you one thing, and your heart's telling you something else. But at the same time, you, you have to bring in the human element. Mm-hmm. You have to examine the human element for you to make a good decision. Um, I need to put myself in their situation to understand why they're so mad. 
you know, and yes. if you can try to clarify, hey, look, you shouldn't be so mad because you're the one who made the mistake by signing this contract, <laughs> right. or you feel offended because your friend did this to you. Um, you know, it's just, it's life. It's being who you are, being your personality, but always remembering that the law is the most important thing. That's, uh, not everybody can do that, exactly, and you Hard are to. incredible at it. You know, we get, uh, we get the cases before, uh, whatever they file in small claims court, you know, we get a copy of that case, um, we get their statements, you know, we get everything that the court got, and based on that, on the evidence, and you know, obviously we have to ask them questions, and what people don't get is that what we see on TV is 22 minutes, you know, it's less than 22 minutes. And how long do they we last? We go on sometimes for an hour, an hour, and we hash things out, and unfortunately our editors do such, I mean, they do a great job, but unfortunately they can't put everything in there. Exactly. So uh, people have to use their common sense and understand much more happened than what is being aired, uh, but you know. It's, it's, it's still a, it's a great, great thing to do, and it's the fun and rewarding job. I, I can't even call it a job because I love it so much. It's, yeah, it's not work it's at not, all. Not. Well, I want to continue to talk okay. about the show, and also I want to talk about living los dichos. Mm -hmm. I can't say in, living los di living los dichos. Living los I, dichos. I, I don't know what's wrong with me. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> so we'll be right back with Cristina Perez with living los dichos. Can't say it. <laughs> the vision that we've established for Ability First really extends beyond the organization itself. I think it transcends Ability First. The vision is of a society that values each individual and that provides opportunities for all people to lead full and productive lives. What does it mean to make a promise? To offer care and provide comfort. To research new possibilities and discover better ways to heal others. What does it mean to make that promise to our nation's veterans? It means dedicated health professionals like you working every day to help the Department of Veterans Affairs keep its commitment to our nation's veterans. By providing the best health care possible through state-of-the-art technology, Teamwork, advanced research, and primary, emergency, and specialized care. At VA, we know what it takes to keep a promise. It takes you. The Department of Veterans Affairs, keeping the promise to those who serve. And we're back here on Laugh It Off with Grace with Cristina Perez and her book, Living Los Dichos. Finally, I said it right. Thank you. <laughs> so, Cristina, yes, what inspired dear. you to write this book? I think what it's my parents. I, my parents' story is, I know it's not unique to the United States. It's, you know, there are so many families that come to this country with a hope of a better, of a better tomorrow, of mm -hmm. a better opportunity to raise a family. You know, the United States is the land of opportunity. It's yes. the land of the free. It's the land where everybody gets a second chance. And as I said before, early on the show, my parents uh, came here from Colombia and they had a dream. Just, you know, my father wanted always to become a surgeon, but he needed to make money. And, it, you know, for a while, as, as you grow and, you, you know, I'm married, I have a, a daughter, you, you search for, for answers. How do I do this? And how do I become a better mother and a better, you know, woman, a professional? And, you know, I just realized all these incredible, as I get older, I realized that I am who I am mm -hmm. because of the story of the legacy my parents have brought to me exactly. and what they stand for and their courage and their hard work and their generosity and their brilliance as human beings. And so it was really about that. It was how I always felt um, that I'm 50-50. I'm half and half. Un poquito de aquí, un poquito de allá. I, I'm an American citizen, and I love being American. But at the same time, I am Latina. I am Colombian. And I was mm -hmm. raised in Mexico, and I always felt like I had one foot here and one foot there. I feel and, the same way. you yeah. know, when I was in law school, somebody told me that that wasn't going to work for me. Every time, people always told me that what would prevent me from being successful was the fact that I was a Latina and a woman. Oh, hello. And, exactly. <laughs> and I just, I couldn't get it. And I realize now that it is that that has made me yes. be happy in my life and, and, and be 
you know, success is just, a, I think, such a subjective term, mm -hmm. but has helped me so much be who I am professionally, exactly. as a mother, as a, as a woman, as a friend. Mm -hmm. And, and that, you know, the book is really a dedication to them. And, you know, thank you so much for, for raising me and putting the right things in my head. Absolutely. I, I think being bicultural or tricultural or whatever mm -hmm. makes you a richer person. And it makes you think about what you want to grab from the Latin culture, yes. from the uh, gringo culture, exactly. <laughs> you no, know? Exactly. But even, you know, it's it's much more than that. The, the message in the book is so universal. It, it You know, my, my best friend who is not, she is, you know, 100% American. I, you know, I said, you know, she has the most incredible mother and father. It is g looking at those values that her parents have given her and like I said not everybody is blessed to have a good family mm -hmm. foundation or a good mother and a father but those who are or have a father figure mother figure it's knowing that we don't have to go out there searching for answers you know self-help books self-help books are are great but you know keep your money <laughs> that's right <laughs> you call know, mom <laughs> you know, exactly. she'll call tell mom. you those are the things that you know they have great advice because they're always right somehow I hate to say it, but they're always right. Always. Not my dad, though. My dad wasn't like, my mom is always right. Yeah, it's... Te dije, te dije, I'm not going to say anything. I'm not going to say anything. I don't want to meddle with your life, but let me tell you, that man is bad news. I don't want to, don't tell me, don't tell me, I don't want to meddle with your life. It's like, you are. Yeah, <laughs> you exactly. Know? Does your mom do that? Oh, yes. I'll and ask that. for advice? Oh, it's just, it's, yeah, she, she, mija, you know, she'll tell you this, she'll tell you that, but it's, yeah, it's, it, you know, I find myself, as I get older, asking for their advice more often. Because we find that, okay, 99.9% .9 they're right. Yeah. So why not go to somebody that we know have that great, you know, yeah. <laughs> the odds I'm of them being you. right. I know. And don't you hate it when she tells you something that you know in your heart yes. is yes. true, but you don't want to face it? Yes. And she just confirms it, and yeah. you're like, Ay! Exactly. But <laughs> no. you know, what I always laugh is that even the most um, taboo subjects with them, uh, you know, whether it's, you know, sex or things oh, like really? that. Oh, really? And, you know, it, it, it's so easy to talk to them about things like that. It's, you know, my mother's hilarious. She's like, mija, acuérdate, you know, when, you, uh, when your child is older, who are you, who's, who you going to end up with? <laughs> Your oh, husband. my mom is always, that's right. Your that's husband, right. so your daughter's going to grow up, your kids are going to grow up, 18, 20, they're going to get married, they're going to leave the house. I mean, I didn't leave the house until I got married, which I'm proud to say that. It's, but, yeah, you know, same here. They're, they're good. if you don't protect your husband, protect the relationship that you have, mm -hmm. you know, it's not going to be there when you want it. Absolutely. It's true. I mean, those are like valuable, valuable things that people forget to remind you of. You know, Absolutely. We live in such a fast-paced world that we forget these little, important little things. I know. I know. My mother has forced me into three marriages so far. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all her, right? <laughs> exactly. Right? Yeah, it's all her. <laughs> Thank you so much for Thank being you, on the so show. Much. Oh, my God. I loved it. Oh, you so I much. enjoyed you. You are fantastic. Oh, my God. And you have to read this book, Living by Los Dichos. It's great. Uh, thank you so much for watching Laugh It Off with Grace. Till next time.